Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Age of Empires 2. In today's video, we are spotlighting some professional level AoE2 gameplay, featuring two of the most beloved members of the AoE2 Pro scene. Both are also members of the Gamer Legion clan. In the blue, we have Jordan, playing as the Slavs, versus in the red, Doubt, playing as the Mayans. Now, before we dive into the analysis of today's game, let me just say that this is a relatively new thing for the channel, me casting pro-level AoE2 gameplay. I'd like to do it more, but I'm looking for some feedback. So if you enjoy today's video, please give it a like. I'd appreciate that. And also leave me some comments on any feedback you might have. Pros, cons. If you want to see more pro-level casts, let me know, because I would love to do that. Now, with that in mind, let's dive into today's video. This is going to be a fascinating matchup, in part thanks to the actual map itself. Today we find ourselves on Mega Random, and Mega Random's map generation today is providing us both an awful lot of safety and security, but also a scarcity of resources. You see, both players are surrounded by fortified palisade walls, which, don't get me wrong, they're not stone walls, but they're an awful lot better than regular palisade walls. So, I wouldn't expect early age feudal aggression. That's not how I would play this map anyway. Because uh, it would be a little difficult to break through these fortified palisade walls. But, on the other hand, you can't stay within the confines of the walls because there aren't a lot of resources within those walls. If we take a look, both players only have about 3,200 gold and 2,100 stone, if I'm not mistaken. So, um... If you're wanting more resources, if you can't end the game quickly, which the fortified palisade walls would suggest you can't, then you're going to have to go outside of the walls. You're going to need to expand your base. And even looking outside of the walls, there really aren't that many resources. It's just little clumps of gold here, clumps of stone there. Even when it comes to wood, there's only so much within the safety of the walls. And if you want... A solid line of, you know, a, a solid wood line. You need to actually go to the northern and the southern flanks. Otherwise, you just have little clumps, little clusters of wood here and there. So, should be an interesting matchup. Now, looking at the civilizations, I think Doubt has a pretty significant advantage on a map that has a scarcity of resources. Because one of the Mayan bonuses is that resources last 15% longer. You're getting 15% more out of every resource. So when gold is scarce, being able to get more gold out of those gold mines is going to be a big deal. I think that's a really nice bonus. Obviously, if you know anything about AoE 2 civs, you know that the Mayans are one of the premier archer civilizations. Uh, you know They produce archers cheaper through the ages. So that's a really nice bonus. And of course, the, uh, the Mayans do start the game with an extra villager, which is a really nice bonus as well. Although, Doubt has actually picked up a little bit of idle TC time, giving Jordan a temporary... I shouldn't say temporary. He's got an eco lead right now. A looks like a half vill eco lead. So that Mayan bonus may not be factoring in as much. But keep an eye on that resource component to the mines. I think that'll be important. Meanwhile, looking at the Slavs. The Slavs don't have a lot of bonuses, but the bonuses they've got are rather impactful. You have, on the one hand, barracks, uh, infantry, militia line units. You get both supplies and the brand new Gambesons technology for free as soon as you tech up. So Slavs have powerful infantry options. You also have uh, cheaper siege units. So maybe we'll see from the Slav player some kind of infantry siege play in order to try to end the game quickly. Maybe that's something we could see. Uh, finally, this is one of my favorite bonuses in the game. It's not very flashy, but it's impactful, and I really do enjoy it. Farmers work 15% faster for the Slavs. So that's going to be a really useful bonus, especially if Jordan goes with the typical Slav composition of either infantry or cavalry alongside uh, you know, siege units. All right, both players. Oh, look at this. Doubt 
on the way up to the feudal age with 19 villagers. We, we've got to totally rewind my analysis here because a 19 villager age up is iconic for some kind of feudal age rush. That is not what I would have expected at all. Jordan just starting his feudal age tech up with a much more, uh, I don't want to say respectable, but typical 25 vil pop up. That's what I would expect from a closed map like this. Doubt has hit the feudal age already. Nine minutes into the game. Archery range coming up right away. That is not a surprise coming from a Mayan player. What are we seeing here? You know, one of the things about pro level players, they do not rest on their laurels. They do not sit back. They love getting control of the tempo of the game and the momentum right away. And even on a map like this, where I would look at this and say, hey, fortified palisade walls, I guess I just need to sit back and fast castle. Doubt's saying no. No, I think I can actually do something here in the feudal age with some early archer pressure. Incredible. All right, one archer produced, a second one on the way. Meanwhile, Jordan, 78, 80% of the way to feudal age. Bill's moving forward, and we see a watchtower coming up. Okay, now this makes sense. If you're going to try to break through the walls, one of the fastest ways to do it is actually by building a watchtower along the wall. And you can burn it down pretty quickly. Between the tower itself and the villagers garrisoning inside the tower. Now take a look at this. Jordan making some smart moves and committing to the fast castle play. He's throwing down a market and a blacksmith. And he's kind of doing double duty. On the one hand, he needs to get those buildings down in order to go up to the next stage. Uh, but he's also using them in order to wall off these units so that even if, or I should say when, these archers break through, they can't really do any damage to him, uh, you know, without breaking through this second line of, you know, buildings. So this is really good. Uh, both players, Doubt, uh, I'm sorry, Jordan now has an ego lead, and he's going up to the Castle Age. Doubt is nowhere near Castle Age. So Doubt is going to have to do damage now if he wants this push to be worthwhile. Bill's moving forward. Uh, I see Doubt does have villagers on stone, so will we see a second watchtower? It's possible. He's certainly in no rush to get up to the castle age. And he has to imagine. He, he sees no kind of unit defense here. He's got to know Jordan's going up to castle. Ah, uh, look at this. Now, the villagers cannot go up and repair the, the house because the archers will be covering. So instead, Jordan throwing down a second market. And the reason why, these, these markets, they cover so much territory. So between the market and then uh, these stone walls, continuing to try to block in these Mayan units, trying to offer the Slavs as much time as possible to get up to the Castle Age and repel this. Now here's the question. What do, what do you do as soon as you hit the Castle Age? Do you go knights and try to repel this? Or maybe you take advantage of the Slavic cheaper siege units. So much wood going into these markets. And certainly, uh, Jordan's economy is being impacted here, even if nothing else happens. Just forcing him to put down a third, well I say a third, a fourth market. That's a lot of wood. Here we go, Siege Workshop coming up. That's going to be the response from the Slob. As the Mayan player continuing to put the pressure on, and I'm noticing he's not producing any more units right now. He's trying to do damage with what he's got. Here we go, a third watchtower coming up from doubt a second watchtower in jordan's base scorpion in the way here and that's an interesting choice why start with a scorpion i don't know if he had enough resources for a mango at the time or maybe jordan values sort of the consistency of scorpion damage versus the raw potential of the manganel's blast villagers are moving back they're moving out i'm 
presuming that they're going back to Doubt's base in order to collect resources. Maybe he's scared off by the siege units. At this point, Doubt has a five villager lead and he is starting to tech up to the castle age. Jordan is not able... Oh my goodness, look at this. You know, all of this wood, all of these resources spent blocking in the mines, keeping them out. And right away, as soon as the siege comes out, walls go down, Jordan goes on the offense. You've got to love it. This is a game of tempo, ladies and gentlemen. This is a game... Neither player wants to sit back and boom. They both want to go on the offense. They want to try to do damage now. What is going to happen here? Meanwhile, oh no. One of the markets has gone down. And now, Mayan archers trying to do damage here. Uh, a couple of, a couple of vills are in danger. But then so are these archers. Okay. And I noticed, all right, he's pulled back. Jordan has pulled back. So the siege, the, the siege units are back here. And he has put up a house. Uh, a house wall. I think he's going to try to block off this area. To close the gates. Jordan having to do both offense and defense at the same time. He wants to knock down these watchtowers. He's trying to secure his own base. But at the same time, he's got to worry about these archers who have killed three villagers so far. Doubt seems to have made a tech switch into Eagle Scouts, which I think makes sense. They're going to do a much better job against the Manganel than Archers will. More villagers going down, and Doubt doing a great job keeping these units alive and just harassing. He's not trying to win the game with raw Archer damage, but just pressure here, you know, picking up a Vil kill here, a Vil kill there and wasting villager time. If you take a look at the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that Jordan has picked up nearly 14 minutes of idle eco time versus only five minutes of idle eco time for Doubt. So he's collecting a an economic lead, even if he doesn't kill villagers, which he is successfully doing. Uh, these scouts are just being annoying. We're seeing scorpions go down to the left and right. But... This watchtower goes down. So Jordan is reclaiming his territory here. Uh, oh, the archer's in the back line. We're down to only one archer left. I don't know who's winning this. Yeah, Jordan is losing siege units, but again, as Slavs, those siege units cost less. And I think Doubt might be slipping when it comes to his, you know, forward pressure and aggression. Now, he does have, even if you delete all of the pressure right now and you delete the base, we kind of reset the stage. Doubt has 10 bills up over Jordan. So I would say that this push is successful. Now, here we go. Okay, finally, good news for Jordan. The army in his base is gone. And we're about to see the second watchtower fall. On the other hand, wait a minute, castle coming up for doubt and oh my goodness, there's a hole there. There is a hole and we have Eagle Scouts surging into Jordan's base. And the classic doubt castle, forward castle from doubt coming up. The pressure just is not stopping. And if this castle goes up, Jordan's in a lot of trouble. This is a this is a bad situation for Jordan, both from an economic point of view and the forward pressure. Now, will the siege be enough to push this back? Perhaps. Jordan calls the GG. Now... Part of me is surprised by that because I think that the siege actually would have repelled this.
Uh, you know, these these are two damaged scouts. They're about to go down. We see a bunch of archers. They won't last long. I think he could have repelled that, and he may have even been able to stop the castle from going up. But on the other hand, uh, it's kind of one of those power plays where just seeing the castle will scare you off. Uh, I think that Jordan realizes that Doubt must have a pretty significant eco lead, a 10 villager lead, and, you know, both players, we see a a second town center from Jordan, a second TC going up for doubt. I think he just realized that there was this economic strength that doubt had acquired, and that's why I decided to call the GG. It might have been a little premature, but I think Jordan just recognized the momentum was on doubt's side. So, well played to both Gamer Legion players, and a tip of the hat to doubt for pulling off a really impressive. Feudal Age, Aggression, a 19-ville Archer Rush on this closed Mega Random map. Very, very well played from both players. Again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a lot of fun to cast. I would love to do this more. But I need to hear from you. If you enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you like what I put out. And uh, let me know in the comments below, do you want to see more pro-level AoE 2? I certainly do. But let me know in the comments below. For now, this is the Iron Kaiser, signing off.